Hello everyone, and welcome to the Quantpedia Explains Trading Strategies video series. Today, we will speak about the improving cross-sectional commodity momentum. Hello everyone, uh, and thank you for watching. My name is Radan Wojtko, I'm CEO of Quantpedia and the Encyclopedia of Algorithmic and Quantitative Trading Strategies. Uh, today we will speak about the commodity market and about the strategies that are related uh, to, this, to this market. Uh, so first, let's take a look on the chart. Uh, so here we have a chart during the last, for the last 15 years. Uh, we see how the commodity market performed. Uh, we can see that we had a strong bull market in 2007-2008, then we had, uh, which was followed by a strong bear market in 2008-2009. Uh, then we have a one year of uh, sideways performance with the bull market in 2010-11. Once again, sideways performance for I don't know three years. A strong bear market in 2014 and six, uh, 2015 and 2016, followed by a uh, very uh, long sideways market for around four years. And last two years we have very strong uh, bull market. But as we can see, the resultant performance of commodities is not very spe spectacular. So it means uh, the Commodity ETF is probably at the same uh, or nearly the same starting prices in uh, 2006. Uh, so how we can perform on this market? Uh, there are two main strategies. The first one is uh, trend following strategy and another one is uh, the cross-sectional momentum. So in trend following strategy, uh, we can uh, time the market, uh, the whole market. So it means we can try to uh, buy the market when it's going up and sell it when it's going down. And in cross-sectional momentum or in cross-sectional strategies, we are trying to uh, uh, invest into individual commodities. We are trying to buy those that are going up and short those uh, that are going down simultaneously. Uh, so it means that our performance should be uh, unrelated to the uh, performance of the underlying underlying market. Uh, so it should be you know, clear alpha, alpha strategy. So let's take a look on a commodity market strategy. Uh, so we will uh, find the uh, strategy in uh, Quantpedia. Uh, it's uh, under the ID uh, 2021. Uh, Here we have it, from uh, commodities. So uh, according to the research, the commodity futures uh, is higher than excellent portfolio diversifier, and they are very good hedge against in inflation. Uh, so we can use the momentum effect in commodities. Uh, and as I mentioned, we can create a universe of commodity futures. We can ra rank futures uh, for each commodity for the last uh, 12 months and divide them into the quintiles. And we can do go long the quintile of the commodities with the highest momentum and go short uh, the quintile with the lowest momentum. Uh, and we can re rebound each month. So this strategy is a long short strategy. We have uh, no exposure to the underlying uh, performance of the whole market. We are just trying to select those commodities that are the best performing and short those that are, that are the worst performing and to have a market neutral uh, strategy uh, with a market neutral performance or out performance. Uh, we can take a look how this strategy performed. Uh, we can see that we have like very interesting performance from 2000 until 2016. Uh, so until that time, uh, we were able to profit from the market uh, and we did it in a market neutral way. But after 2016, it seemed that the strategy is not so uh, performing so well. So we have, uh, our strategy lost, uh, lost some money. So the question is how we can improve uh, this basic underlying commodity momentum strategy. Uh, and the first thing how to do it or how we can uh, improve the strategy is to use the exotic assets. Uh, we can use exotic assets not just to improve the commodity momentum strategy. So basically any strategy can be improved uh, if we change our investment universe. Uh, if we do not use uh, the uh, underlying that is well known or underlying um, that, is, uh, that is part of the index, but if we move into the uh, assets that are less known or less popular. Uh, there is even there are multiple um, theoretical papers uh, that explain this effect. Uh, I would tell that the most important is the Bobton, Zurich, and Kaplan's uh, popularity as the pricing theory. Uh, 
where uh, in the state that there is a relationship between how popular the asset class is or how popular the asset is uh, and how you can uh, use it to build the trading strategy or how you can uh, use it to uh, profit uh, out, of, out of the asset. So uh, let's move into our example with the commodities. So uh, we can take a look uh, how is performing the commodity strategy if we are using the standard uh, standard commodities and if we are using the exotic uh, futures or uh, futures that are not so uh, not so popular. Uh, we can see that uh, if you are using the futures that are not so uh, so popular, we can have a higher uh, higher performance. Uh, with lower uh, maximum drawdown, but on the other, while on the other hand, if we are using the futures, commodity futures uh, that are part of the index, we will have the uh, lower performance with the higher, with the higher standard deviation, higher maximum drawdown. Uh, we did a similar backtest. Uh, we used the data from January 1997 to May to May 2020. Uh, we obtained uh, that data for 40 commodity futures. Uh, and we uh, split this inter investment universe uh, into multiple sections. So we, we identified which commodities uh, are the part of the main two main uh, future commodity indexes, which is the S&P uh, S&P GSCI, GSCI um, index or Bloomberg Commodity Index. Uh, so we divided the investment universe into those commodities that are part of the uh, Bloomberg Commodity Index. That are part of GSCI or that are part of both indexes, uh, and then we have a futures that are not uh, part of any of those two indexes. So those commodity futures are our exotic asset class, and we run our commodity momentum strategy on top of uh, those uh, on top of those uh, commodity futures, and we uh, check what is the performance of the strategy. So let's take a look. Uh, and here are the results. So what we see is uh, that uh, we can split the performance into two groups. So uh, the lower three lower three lines uh, here are the strategies that are trading the uh, futures that are part of the both both indexes uh, or at least one of those you know, one of those indexes. And the higher part, uh, with the green and the yellow, uh, those are the strategies that are trading uh, commodity futures that are not uh, in both indexes or are just in one index. Uh, the highest performing strategy is the yellow one, uh, which is uh, trading the uh, contracts that are excluded from both of the indexes. So what does it mean is uh, so, as we can see, the performance of the lower three strategies is very similar to the performance of our original momentum strategy, while the yellow one strategy is uh, the performance is clearly improved. Uh, and the reason for that is just that we moved from the um, popular uh, futures that are part of the investment universe of um, basic or common uh, indexes and we are using some exotic assets. Uh, the performance of such strategy has a uh, significantly higher Sharpe ratio, uh, significantly lower volatility or, and uh, significantly higher uh, performance. So that's that's one of the ways how we can improve uh, the performance of the uh, momentum strategy. Another way is to combine the momentum strategy with some uh, other rule. So in this case, uh, I'm showing the trend following. Uh, filter combined with the commodity momentum strategy. Uh, so how we can improve on the underlying commodity momentum. Uh, so instead of just holding the uh, outperforming uh, futures and shorting the underperforming futures, uh, we can uh, add a trend following filter and we can apply trend following filter into each uh, selected future. So uh, we do not just need to have the commodity with a high performance. Uh, it must uh, also have a, um, it must be also trending. Uh, so it, the performance must be over the uh, six-month simple moving average, or uh, under the six-month moving average uh, if you want to short that commodity. 
So we are going long, the winners short the losers that are fulfill that are fulfilling the trend following filter conditions. Uh, so it's not just they have a strong momentum, but they also have, uh, they are also trending. Uh, so the resultant the resultant strategy uh, is also improved. Uh, it has uh, better performance uh, and uh, doesn't have such a strong drawdown in uh, the um, years 2015 and 2016 when the commodities uh, were in, uh, in um, bear market. Uh, so uh, thank you for today. Uh, and I hope that you will join us in the next video. Interested? Then pick another video to learn more, or subscribe to Quantpedia Pro and try how our analytics and reporting significantly save time spent on quantitative research.